بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى has given us iman that's a great bounty and ni'mat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but to preserve this iman a lot of effort and sacrifice is required Mawalana Yusuf Rahmatullah used to say acquiring a thing is very easy but maintaining is difficult then it needs constant effort perpetually till the end, till the life of that item for somebody to get pregnant is easy but the stages after it, ask the mother nine months how much difficulty she goes through, then childbirth, labor. Then when the child is born, looking after the child in the different stages, it's a lifetime effort. Even grandmothers today still got the stress. Forget their children, now they got the stress even on their grandchildren. So you say, likewise, Iman is the same thing. Allah has given us Iman, it is a bounty, but the maintaining of Iman, and that's why Masjid al-Nabawi and every household of the Ummah should be filled with these amal of da'wat. We need to be speaking about Allah more. Invite to Allah, invite to amal, ta'alim. Have ta'alim in our houses, have ta'alim in firadi. Start learning masail, reading books, reading Islamic history, reading the lives of Sahaba, etc. Dhikr and ibadat, our houses should be filled with amal, with salah, with tilawat. With adhkar, with adi'ah and du'as, etc. And khidmat, the jazba to sacrifice for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one is just iman, but more than that is the effort of iman to make sure we maintain this iman, we regulate this iman, we culminate this iman to the level where Allah in His Rasul is happy with us and we're ready to die and leave this world. Nabi alayhi salam's hadith, Ana akhidun bi hujjusikumaninna, those moths that are thronging on that fire, see benefit in the fire they're ready to die they think so it's life that's why they go into the fire but actually that's their destruction i am grabbing you by your waist is you seeing the actions of dajjal and dajjal will come he will show you jannat but it's jahannam like those moths are seen jannat in that fire but it's their jahannam so all the fitness that are going to come my sunnat, what I've brought to you, that you need to hold steadfast on to. The day you leave that, like a person who's climbing a mountain, he makes sure he has his security gear. When things go wrong, he's got a backup rope. It's a plan B, a plan C, fire extinguisher. Your protection 24 hours of the day is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent her for an objective like a boss sends his employee <clears throat> he summons him and he says it's very urgent I'm sending you to Durban I need those documents within the next 24 hours it's quite crucial the situation is critical critical rush he goes there to Durban he finds the house is deteriorated he says hey you know what let me just sort this out out let me uh, re renovate it let's me let's do some uh, renovations so he paints it, he fixes it up, everything. He comes after a week. He comes with pictures to the boss. Hey, you know what? I went to Durban, I fixed up your house. This was a condition, but how was? And now it is. He's gone. You dismissed. I gave you 24 hours. I needed important documents. I've lost the deal. I've lost the contract. Like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us into this world for an objective and a purpose. And we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's going to ask us when we come back, did you bring the documents? I'm not worried about the house that you build, the car that you own, the clothing that you have. That's immaterial. What did you bring? What for akhirat? So we need to check all the time. And that's why these signs have been mentioned for us to reflect all the time, to be checking ourselves. Sign number seven is لا تقوم الساعة حتى تظهر الفتن that fitness will become co common aswaq, and marketplaces will come together. Marketplaces will have close proximity. Few meanings. Number one, cities will expand to such an extent that now marketplaces, when a city expands, then the marketplaces also expands with the city. Number two, we will have bigger markets. For example, nowadays we can understand it where there's malls, and achieve most of the hadith which we are doing now, let us relate it to today's times. And we can already see it first, 100%. Number three, meaning ability to travel from one market to another. 
Why? Due to the rapid travel modes that exist in prevalent today. We see there's so much different forms of azbab available for us to travel from one market to another. Number four, stock exchanges, where markets are controlled by a central system. So all these markets have come onto one exchange. Number five, our online shopping structure, where everything is in one platform online. The markets are already closed. Then number two, home delivery. Your market is far, but it comes to your house. Number three, online auctions, where you can be anywhere in the world, but you can be budding. So the whole world now, all the markets of the world are at your fingertips. Number four, online global portals where you can source out suppliers, you can source out products. So on one website in the whole world, <clears throat> you can source all these products. Number six, one global price structure. For example, you want to buy gold, there's a, a global LBMA structure pricing for gold, pricing for silver, pricing for copper, pricing for wheat. So the commodities of the earth have become one, one close together, one structure. And number seven, transport systems for global trade. For example, nowadays, air freight, very easy, you want a product, it's there, rail, ocean tankers, containers, ports, etc. Marketplaces will become close. Connected to this is Wastaf Shut Tijara number eight. The Tijarat and business will become arm in common, and we can relate to that. Number nine, min Ashrati Yafshul Mal. We've mentioned these three here, yeah, the third one, where wealth will become common, wealth will become arm. There will be a lot of wealth. So let us look on, uh, compared to our olden days, where we, we experienced it, the youngsters cannot understand it. But when couples got married, they never even owned a fridge. They collected money to buy a mattress. And having a car was impossible, was far-fetched. In one household, brothers would and girls' daughters would share their shoes, they would share their clothes. So my eldest brother used it, I used it, now my younger brother used it. It should go in generations. Then we should give it the same things, the same shoes, the same clothes, we should give it to everybody else. Those days when visitors came, there was no drinks. You would actually send, our parents should send us to the cafe to go buy a drink for the visitor. Or go to the neighbor, the year for a short while, go quickly, borrow this from the neighbor, borrow this from the neighbor. Those days. And now wealth, utensils, we have utensils for different occasions, different times, cutlery, etc. Food, how many fridges do we have, how many freezers do we have, how many pantries do we have, how many uh, storerooms do we have. Look at our clothing. Alma say, in a time of Sahaba, the amount of utensils that they were in our houses, probably there wasn't so much in the whole of Medina Munora. The amount of food that are in our houses, probably the amount of food was not in the whole of Medina, Medina Munora. The amount of clothing, we have a shoe for every occasion. A shoe, a watch, a bag, everything to match for an occasion. You say probably the clothes in one household today, probably in the whole of Medina, there was not so much clothing. It's a topic on, an, on its own of what Saba went through, what the cleave they gave for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Yafshul Mal, wealth will become common. And let's look at it on a global level. US dollar physically, if we have to count the physical currency, they say there's 1.2 trillion dollars. If you count funds, reserves, CDs, uh, feds, 10.5 trillion dollars. Let's look at the global level. Total global physical wealth, it's estimated, and this is in the realm of man, man is estimating 36.8 trillion dollars. And if we have to add other currencies like Bitcoin and crypto, etc., you're looking at 90.4 trillion dollars. And if we have to include derivatives, other funds, etc., you're looking at 1.2 quadrillion dollars. You must remember, one billion dollars is a thousand. One billion is a thousand million. One trillion is a, is a thousand billion. 
What's a quadrillion? So wealth will become arm, wealth will become common. But that same wealth will be the means of the destruction of this ummah because they will get engaged. Oh my Sahaba, I'm not worried about anything. You can die out of hungerness, you can die out of starvation, you can die out of poverty. That's not my concern. I'm not worried about that. ولكن أخشى عليكم أن تبسط عليكم الدنيا كما بسط على من كان قبلكم wealth will come open to you like how it came to the people of the past فتهلككم كما أهلكتهم and this dunya will destroy you and wipe you out like how it destroyed the people of the past so we need to be checking ourselves just on yesterday's topic حتى تكلم رجل عذبة صوته that the top of your whip will speak and your shoelace will speak. There wasn't time for this explanation. But another meaning, Ajib Janab Rasulullah has foretold whoops and shoelaces are similitude of cables. And Nabi Islam didn't mention one type of a string or cable like a whoop, but he's mentioned a whoop, a shoelace, that there will be different cables. Like nowadays, you get ribbon cables, you get jelly fill cables, you get coaxial cables, you get fiber optic cables, submarine cables. So the different types of cables that will come into the world. 1858, first transatlantic cable was connected from North America to Europe. Then telephone lines came in in vogue, 1956. 1.3 billion telephone lines worldwide. Submarine cables which are under the ocean, 420 submarine cables with a total of 1.2 billion kilo, uh, 1.2 million kilometers of cables. In next few years, they want to add another 74 lines which will add another 300,000 kilometers of cable. Why? Because cable is eight times faster than satellites for the Dajjali program. Look at 1896, already 30 shops. 1896, approximately 30 shops were at sea laying cables. Most of them were controlled by the British. A fiber optic link around the globe, an average, you're looking at 28,000 kilometer line. The longest completed line which is called the Simi Wee, South uh, East Asia line, Middle East line and Western Europe line was completed in 2000, 39,000 kilometers for one line that linked 33 countries. These are the Jali plans because they need to track movements, track people, track currencies, control it. So when Mahdi comes, we got the Mahdi, we got his followers, we control the entire system. Wa makaru, wa makar Allah. Do your systems. But I shouldn't be part of that system. I shouldn't be supporting the systems. Those people that are supporting videos, pictures, be supporting these systems. You, you, a person is a magnet. Put your picture on Facebook. You're a magnet for jadu, for black magic. The jal is a magician. He's going to do deception. He's going to do jadu. Your picture is there. You're drawing jadu, black magic on you. You're drawing nazar. So we need to be checking. I look how co common and am. Just very quickly, Google and Microsoft are the major investors on all these lines here. Every minute, 60 seconds in the world. 60 seconds, what's happening? Look, we already spoke around 14 minutes. Times it by 14. For GIFs, 4.8 million every 60 seconds. Netflix, 700,000 hours of video. Instagram, 278,000 stories. YouTube, every 60 seconds, 4.5 million videos. Twitter, 511,000 tweets. Skype, 232,000 calls. Airbnb, 1,400 reservations. Uber, 10,000 rides globally. Tinder, the markers of Zina, 1,400 swipes every minute. Google, 4.5 million searches. Twitch, 1 million videos. It's statistics goes on and on and on. So let us think, am I part of this plan? Am I the plan of Allah and His Rasul or am I in the plan of Iblis and Dajjal? One point which there wasn't time to mention as well is where Isa will come and will destroy pigs. 
And this is very important. We need to be checking our Allah al-Haram. He said, Hajjaj bin Yusuf, when he was one over area, and he could not take control of it, he called the pious people because it was mustajab, and all people that came, tyrant rulers, were wiped out. He gave them a doubt, and he said, do what you want to do. They said, what are you talking about? He said, I fed you haram. I fed you haram. Now your du'as are not accepted. That's silahul mumin. That's a weapon for us. But it will make sure that our weapon is destroyed. That's our strongest weapon. And in today, if you look at the global food processing industry, just simple things like sheep, 7 million, 17 million tons, uh, chicken, 65 million tons, beef, 61 million tons, nothing compared to pork. Global consumption, 110 million tons consumed globally. And what do we get out of this pork products? from ordinary plates to cups, from the bones of it, they're making that, from medical, whether it's burn dressing, whether it's painkillers, multivitamins, tablets, capsules, insulins, other medicines, vaccines, heart valves, from food, your calcium oils, chewing gum, marshmallows, cereals, rendered for cheese, pet food, pastries, bread, chocolate, biscuits, ice cream, yogurts, juice, even in our dough, our brain, pork, in industrial items, lubricants, glycerin, fertilizer, paint, paper, crayons. In our toothbrushes, toothpaste, mouth rinses, washers, daily things which we use, shampoos, conditioners, makeup, soaps, washing powder, fabric softener, moisturizers, body lotion, anti-wrinkle cream. And if we cannot believe it, even in bullets, because when a believer is strike with a bullet, then he must have pork, die with haram in him. The bone gelatin, it's used to help transport gunpowder uh, gun in the casing. They put, in, put bone gelatin in bullets. These are all ibrats and lessons for us to take. If I'm not going to take it now, we Allah has given me an opportunity to make Tawbah in the month of Ramadan. With the free time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me, with all the bounties and nirmats that Allah has given me, then when will I ever do it? The dua for today is to read Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Let me explain. One is in the shadaid, when you have turmoil, difficulties, pandemonium, etc., pandemics, where Nabi alayhi salam was narrating the hadith and he told Sahaba, Qulu Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Sahaba was stressed and worried what's going to happen. Judgment day is close. Wa il taqmal qarn. The angel has put Cotton ready to blow the trumpet. Nabi Ali Sam said, read that. The Raddi Kaidil Ada, when there's the spelling and plotting of the enemies and the people of Batil, now's the time we have to read it. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Likewise, Al Khawf min wuqui zulm, when you have fear, oppression, and wrongs, read this dua. Likewise, Kifayatul Humum, Wal Humum, removal of fear, anxiety for security, for protection. We should read it at least seven times morning and evening. Otherwise, randomly in any situation, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. And discussed yesterday the importance of tahajjud. It's going to be emphasized and should have been a separate topic, but time-wise we restricted tahajjud, tahajjud, tahajjud. Ashrafu ummati hamalatul Qur'an. The honorable and the most virtuous people of my ummah are those of the Quran. Wa ashabul layl. I need to become people of the night. Alaykum bi qiyamil layl. Oh my ummah, don't ever miss tahajjud. Fa innahu dabdu salihin. Does the routine of the pious of the past. Wa qurbatun ila rabbikum. And a means to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa makfaratun lil sayyad. To wipe out your guna. Wa manhatun anil ithm. It will prevent you, it will stop you from committing guna, we shall draw the azab of Allah. And it expels, it drives out sicknesses. People are worried today about sickness and disease. Nabi alayhi salam has given us a cure. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deciding an azab is going to come to our locality, wal mustaghfirina bil ashar. I look at the time of tajud. Are people making tawbah in